yeah so good evening everyone uh, welcome to the dsc carnival 2k21 uh, today is the 10th day of the carnival and uh, i'm anurag mishra uh, from ast indore and i'll be the host for today's session uh, i hope you are you all are enjoying the session so let's move towards the today's session uh, the topic for the today is is trees and the instructor for the today's today session is mr wakar ahmed which is a well known personality okay so he's the owner of the code and code channel on youtube and a power programmer at infosys okay so i think the introduction you already know and at last uh, the quiz winner will be announced and the, the quiz link will be also circulated and the winner of the quiz will get a, a t-shirt from the prep bite so without taking too much time let's uh, start the session so over to you sir Oh, thank you, Anurag. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, this is Code and Code, as you might, you guys might already know. So, cutting all of the introduction, uh, uh, that is not much important. Uh, let's start uh, straight back to our lecture. So, today we'll be covering most of the tree algorithm. Not uh, there are four or five algorithms that we'll be covering. Uh, first, we'll be uh, we'll be learning how we represent tree. Uh, tree data structure and what are the different traversal techniques like BFS and DFS. And then we'll be learning about the diameter of the tree, how you can find it. And also, uh, after that, I think we have one, one more topic to cover. Okay. Uh, LCA. Yeah, that is most important. Uh, lowest common ancestor. When you are given a tree, you are given two points. You have to find the uh, LCA. That is lowest common ancestor. Okay. So... Uh, so let's like start. So uh, before starting, Anurag, are you there? I think hello. Uh, so, yes, sir. so Anurag, uh, uh, this session will be uh, interactive, right? Yeah sure. yeah, sure. So I'll be I'll be getting all of my uh, comments. I'll be, I'll be interacting with the students in the comment section. Yeah, okay. in the comment okay. section. Okay, thank you. Okay, so guys, if you have any any doubt uh, or if my pace is not uh, correct, you can always post it, uh, post a comment uh, telling me that I should pace up or slow down, uh, depending upon the situation. Okay, in the comment section. So so let's get started. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. Okay. So I think the screen is visible. So uh, let's start with the tree representation. So first of all, what is tree? Uh, here on the screen that you can see this whole thing is actually a tree. So uh, in tree, we have two things. First of all, uh, these entities, which are known as the nodes, and then the relationship between them that are known as the edges, right? So uh, First thing we have to learn how to represent this thing in data structure. Okay, so there are two most widely no, uh, widely I mean widely used techniques to represent these the structure of the tree. Uh, first is adjacency matrix representation, and the other is adjacency list representation. We'll be learning both. So this graph, the, this this tree that you see, uh, this can be anything. Like uh, these these entities can be uh, can be destinations different destinations and these can be roads connecting them these can be cities like uh, and these can be uh, airline connections the, the so like uh, you, we have city a we have city b there is one airline uh, facility from a to b and so on so the, the these represents real life uh, structure and you will encounter them uh, very much like uh, in even in the social media network you have like this is a person a and then he has died he's directly connected or basically friend with b and c okay and then b have friend like d and e so uh you might get notification in the in facebook like uh, the b sorry d and e are friends of your friends would you like to connect with them also so this is how it is done uh friendship structure is represented somehow using the graph okay uh the internal implementation i'm not so sure how facebook does it but most of them they are using graph data structure to store the relationship of friends and then using this they can get many information like how many friends you have for example for this person how many friends it had only two number of edges which are directly connected to it so this is about 
graph or tree. Tree is a subset of graph uh, in which if there are n nodes, okay, so these entities that you see are actually nodes and the entities are connected by the edges, okay? So we'll call edges, okay, sorry, my writing not so good. So we have edges, okay? We'll be representing them by E and then we have nodes. We'll represent using V and if I use certain different notation, I'll let you know. So basically the question is how you will represent this whole structure, okay? So let's name them first, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So we have two different kind of representation. One is adjacency matrix representation. So I need to remove all of this and start with the very basic graph which i can show you using representation of matrix because that is going to take a lot of space so suppose you have a simple tree structure like one two three and four okay so you will have a matrix of size four cross four how many nodes we have four and that's why the size of the matrix will be four cross four so this is the matrix So one, two, three, four, these are columns. One, two, three, four, these are rows. So now, uh, since uh, this whole row will represent the status of node one, okay? So node one is connected to node three and two, right? This is two, my bad, my, I'm not used to work with this pen tab. So, so this is node two, node one is connected to two and three. So in row one, add column, two and three, we will store one, which represents node one is directly connected to node two, node one is directly connected to node three. The rest of the cells in the row one will be zero because node one is not directly connected to node one or four, right? There is no edge directly connected to, uh, sorry, this will be one because every node is connected to itself. So this, this whole diagonal will be actually one. Node one is directly connected to itself it is connected to two and it is connected to three. That is why one, 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 two, and one, three are one. And this is one, four is zero because there is no direct connection from node one to node four. So you might already have guessed what will be row two. Row two will be, uh, two, one will be one. Two, two will be one because node two is connected to itself. There's no direct connection from node two to three. So zero and zero. Similarly, let me fill for the other ones. For three, we are directly connected to one and four. This is zero. And for four, we are directly connected to three only. So four, four is one and four, three. So this is how your adjacency matrix represent, uh, representation will look like, okay? So you will have a matrix. And then if there is a connection between node A and B, you'll be provided input with edges. Uh, so if you are given with N nodes, you will be provided with N minus one edges because in tree, if there are N nodes, there'll be N minus one edges exactly. So they'll be provided you, uh, providing you and minus one edges. So input will be like one, two for this edge, one, three, and then three, four. Okay. So each time you receive a B, a, which represents a single edge, what you can do, you can have an array AR doesn't matter what you name. And then at position a B, you can set it to one. Same goes for position mm, B A, you can set it to one. So this is how you process all of the edges. Okay, so this way the, your adjacency matrix representation will work. And now one important thing about this is drawbacks that you must know about this representation. See here, uh, as you can see, if there are N nodes, it requires, uh, let me just use some other space. So. Okay. So here, what is the space complexity? That means how many, how much space you require. If like there are n nodes in your tree or graph, then space that you require to store them will be n square. Okay. So if input is of size one million, 
then you require 10 for 12 integer or uh, size of integer array which is a lot and most of them will be wasted because they'll be storing zero most of them because not all nodes are connected to every other node in tree in fact uh, graph it is possible but in tree not every node is directly connected to every other node okay so we see that the drawback of adjacency metric representation is that it uses a lot of space the, uh, the thing uh, the one of the properties which is very good for for uh, metric representation is that you can very quickly find out whether two nodes are directly connected or not if i ask you whether node two and four are directly connected or not you can directly go to cell two four either you can check two four or you can check four two both of them are representing zero that means they are not directly connected okay so in constant time you will be able to find out whether the two nodes are directly connected or not but when you go for the next representation that is adjacency list representation you won't be able to find out in constant time but the thing about adjacency metrics is uh, adjacency list representation is that it uses linear space it doesn't use a uh, quadratic space okay so let's see what is it adjacency list representation and then we'll take some questions from this or maybe if i have to show you through implementation we'll go with that as well so for the same graph let's go for adjacency and sorry adjacency list representation okay so see here for each node what we are going to do we are going to have a flexible list okay so for node one i have a list what is this okay okay, okay sorry. for node one i will have a list okay for node two i'll have a list and for node three i'll have a list for node four i'll have a list so node one is directly connected to node two and three so list size of node one will be of two and it will store two and three because node one is directly connected to node three and two that's why it is having a list of two right node two is directly connected to one only so one node three is connected to two elements which are four and one so one and four and note four this is four okay note four directly connected to only three so it will store three so here you see space that we are using is very very well, very much i mean very less as compared to adjacency matrix representation which requires n square space here the space is only linear not quadratic okay so this is uh, one of the uh, major uh, prof uh, profit that you get using adjacency list representation and uh, how you can implement it so you can you can have an a vector in c++ you can have an uh, an array of vectors like uh, vector of int and then have an array of size n okay or n plus 1 if you want to work with one base index system so each node will get its own vector vector basically represents your list so adding and removing from the list at the back only takes constant time so if you have a vector like this and there is there comes an edge a b so what you can do you can go to a r of a i'm i'm talking about the uh vectors okay i'll show you with an implement, uh, implementation if needed a r of a dot push back p b is for push back b okay so in the adjacency list of a you added b and same goes for a r of b dot push back a so in the adjacency list of b you added a so this way you are adding elements at the back of the list because in list of a we need b in list of b we need a depending upon whether this is directed or not i'm for now we are working for undirected changing it from directed to undirected is very easy uh, we will not cover that so yeah this is adjacency list or adjacency uh, matrix representation this is adjacency list representation that we have learned about and then we have learned about adjacency matrix representation as well so let's see if we have any question before we move on to other and if you want me to show you some practical implementation we can do that too okay so so do we have any questions in the chat box i can't see anything
<laughs> Am I audible, by the way? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is private chat. Oh, my bad. That was private chat. I have to go to comments. Okay, sorry. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Most likely. Uh, Surinder asked whether this is a session on graph or tree. No, this is a session on tree. But the thing is, tree is a subset of graph. To explain tree, we have to go through graph. That was I was explaining a little bit about tree. Oh, sorry, about graph. So, okay. Uh, do we have any questions related to the two representation method that we just saw? Or uh, should I show you through implementation? Uh, Rohan says the seems like the session is not interactive. Sorry, uh, I, uh, I didn't knew that I had to go to the comments. I thought this is the place where I'll be getting. Oh, sorry, my screen is actually not here. It is now. Visible. See, uh, I was looking at this screen. I thought I'll be getting all of the comments sec comments here in the private chat. Okay, uh, I didn't knew I'll be getting the comments here. So that's why I didn't uh, I didn't see the comments earlier and didn't respond. So yes, you are audible, no doubt, sir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When do we use that? Uh, uh, usually, uh, most likely that the session that we are getting is for those guys who have are going to prepare for either technical interview rounds or for the part uh, participation in the competitive programming contest right so in the competitive programming contest you will be you will be getting a lot of questions related to tree or graph if when you when you think about real life uh, examples you will be learning this in networking where you learn about the dif different routing models in in the routers or uh, when you are working with networking, you will be learning about that. So that will be implemented using uh, graph algorithms are used there in the networking. Uh, in social media sites, of course, your your uh, relationship is used or representation or stored in the system using graph, most likely, uh, since we do not know the implementation, how they are implementing. But most uh, beneficial way will be to store the uh all of the relationship using the graph data structure so yeah these these are the uh, and also you use google maps right so in the maps also you'll be uh you'll be seeing all of the destination that you have like i want to go here or there those are represented by the nodes and the roads are represented by the edges and graph algorithms are used to find the shortest distance between one point to another so real life there are many real life implementation of these algorithms that you will be learning Uh, can you please explain that up to what limit should we use adjacency metrics? So see, uh, Rajas says, uh, see, usually you should not go, uh, you should not create an array, integer array of size greater than 10 power 7. Okay. Uh, you should no go beyond 10 power 7. Uh, if you want to see why, there is also whenever you are working on, on any online platform be it code chef code forces you will be given two things for each for each question you will be given time limit and also you will be given uh, given a memory limit so you see you uh, if you are taking an array of size 10 power 7 ah sorry so if you are taking an array of size 10 power 7 of integer type it requires four byte right so these many bytes you are using to to convert it into kilobytes divide by 10 power 3 to convert it to megabyte convert it uh, divide by 10 power 3 again so if you are creating an array of size 10 power 7 uh, it is going to take roughly around 40 mb okay if i'm making some calculation mistakes please let me know but if you are using uh, an integer array which takes four bytes okay and you are creating an array of size 10 power 7 these many mb of space you are using 40 mb if you go for 10 power 8, simply multiply it by 10, so 400 MB. If you are creating an array of size 10 power 8, it takes 400 MB. And you will be given with the memory limit. And depending upon that, you can decide how, how much space you are going to use. Most likely, when you are working with 2D array, uh, you, you should not go beyond 10 power 3 into 10 power 3. Okay. Most likely, you should not go beyond 10 power 7. Okay. So that, that you should keep in mind 
don't go beyond 10 to the power 7 that may cause MLE that is memory limit exceeded or also or to process this this amount of memory it can also cause uh, time limit exceeded TLE so 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 okay uh, is, it, uh, is it necessary to learn recursion before uh, trees uh, the answer is yes actually because if you are going to use dfs which will be used a lot uh, even for advanced algorithm that you work on trees uh, you need to have the knowledge of recursion because you will be applying dfs even to apply dp or other algorithms you need to have the knowledge of dfs and that's why you need to have the knowledge of recursion yes that is correct so someone is asking for practical implementation let me just uh, let's go for practical implementation as well. I hope we are not wasting too much time. Okay. I'm just setting up the screen. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Now screen should be visible. Okay. Uh, is there, uh, can anyone confirm? Is this screen visible? No. Yeah, I thought so because just a second. Share the screen. Okay. This one share. Okay. Yeah. Now it should be visible. Okay. So if we are going for practical implementation, see for adjacency matrix representation, you can create an array of size like uh, depending upon what is the number of nodes. I'm going for 1000 cross 1000 because I'm assuming the maximum number of nodes can be 1000 at max. So you will be provided first n, the number of nodes. Uh, let me increase the font size. This should be visible. You'll be provided with n, the number of nodes. And then if, if number of nodes are n, number of edges are n minus 1. If you are working with tree, okay? For graph, it can change. So each time, simply read a and b and then in the uh in the array a b set it to one and also b a set it to one right the other places are already set to zero because when you declare an array globally in c plus plus at least all of the values are initialized with default value for integer it is zero okay so all of the cells are already containing zero you only have to change those which uh, which are provided in the edges, right? So AB is an edge. So cell AB and BA both should be one. And that is exactly what we are doing here. So we have taken input and uh, now our graph is set. Now you can perform algorithms like uh, you can perform DFS or BFS on this graph. Uh, for now, let's just simply print it. This is a for loop that's run from one to N, okay? J and simply uh, for now i'm printing only uh, and i was showing you that this is this is the only line that you have to write to read and create the array the graph uh, let's see how can I... we haven't learned about dfs or bfs that's why that's why i'm not going for dfs or bfs representation just just in a moment we'll be learning about that so if suppose let's let's input the same graph that we created here. So the graph is there are four nodes. Uh, increase the font size of this as well. This should be visible. There are four nodes. One is connected to three. One is connected to two. Three. Three is connected to four. Okay. So here you see this is your adjacency matrix representation. Oh yeah yeah. I forget one thing. Uh, since every node is connected to itself, I have to set this manually this diagonal so for diagonal you can run a loop here itself uh, before doing anything you can run a for loop and set the diagonal ii to be one because each node is connected to itself right and so this is let's input this graph again increase the font size four nodes, one is connected to three, one is connected to two, three is connected to four. Okay, here you see, 
see diagonal and left leave here one is connected to two and one one is connected to three right because one two and one three are set to one here you see right and same goes for node uh, let's see for node three or three is connected to one and three is connected to four right so this is how your adjacency matrix representation works so this is how you take input in adjacency matrix representation and this is how you create the graph right in adjacency list representation instead of vector what we are oh, sorry in, instead of uh this what what we have 2d array we have vector of int array of vector of int how many nodes can we have i'm assuming we can have 10 to the power 5 number of nodes so basically i have 10 to the power of uh, five different list right so okay now what we are doing we are reading n minus 1 edges and now what you would do in that essentially list of a simply insert push back push back is function used to insert element in in vector okay uh in that essentially list of a insert b and same goes for in that essentially list of b insert a okay this is your graph is done for each node you can print all of their nodes so in node in the adjacency list of current node which is ith node in simply print node space so now what we are doing we are reading the graph after that what we are doing we are printing for each node its uh, adjacency list is what we are printing there so again there are like four nodes one is connected to two one is connected to three three is connected to four so for node 1 node 1 is connected to 2 and 3 so that's why we are getting output 2 and 3 node 2 is connected to node 1 only uh node 3 is connected to node 1 and 4 that's why in the adjacency list of node 3 you have 1 and 4 node 4 is only connected to 3 now you might have a question why we are not having uh in each node why we are not having itself in the node right in the in the adjacency list of that node or uh, you can tweak it here yeah, you can do it yourself uh, we don't actually need that when we are working with adjacency list representation and we are applying bfs or dfs okay so last question that i took was this 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 yeah so we we have covered two things both the representation method of tree now we have to learn about the uh, traversal tree so there are two traversal techniques till now every everyone is clear i mean no doubt till representation right <laughs> anyone okay i'm not getting any response so i'm assuming that till now we are all clear okay so let's go for dfs and bfs for for that let's just increase the size of this uh, node 1 2 3 4 oh sorry node 5 node 7 and node 6 okay so this is the tree we are working with and let's go ahead and learn about dfs first dfs that is defer search okay so the basic idea of defer search there are two traversal techniques traversal techniques means traversing the whole graph one by one in certain way so in dfs a uh, traversal technique is that you start from certain node you can call it root and then starting from there uh, you go one by one choose certain path and go as deep as possible that is dfs for for example uh, uh, just just randomly choose a path and keep going down right uh, when i said go as deep as possible doesn't mean that you have to take this path no a dfs can start from node 1 and can uh, can go this path as well so basically choose a node and then randomly choose another node which is not visited uh, and directly connected to the current node and move there from here again go to the node which is not visited again choose certain node which is directly connected to this and is not visited uh, so basically go here and here and so on so this is how dfs works so let me explain this in details let me before that let me see if, if there are any uh any questions no garo says hello okay hello garo uh so this is tree session please explain traversal of tree 
uh, are actually pre-order, post-order, and those are specifically for uh, you can say binary ternary or canary tree. We are learning here about the general tree. In fact, uh, the DFS or BF, DFS and BFS uh, lie in one of these categories. But let me see. Can I? Ah. Uh, and we are in this session only going to cover BFS and DFS. Okay. Uh, maybe in, on some other day, we will cover pre-order, post-order and in-order traversal because we only have limited time and I cannot explain. And I, ha I, I have to cover a lot of things. So <laughs> that, that that question is not relevant to, to the lecture. So so I'll be answering that uh, in a moment. And by the way, Infosys, I'm working in Infosys. So a DFS, so first let's learn about DFS. The basic idea is start from certain node. For example, we are going to start with the node node one okay we are going to start from node one right from this node what you will do you need to keep track of which node you have visited already okay so you can have a visited array of boolean type how many nodes do we have three four seven one two three four five six seven okay node one two three four five six seven you need to keep track of which node you have already visited okay so i'm for that i'm create i have created a boolean array and i'll uh, zero represents that node has not been visited and one basically true will represent that node has been visited for now none of the nodes have been visited so how your dfs will work from the graph you will pick a node and then run a dfs on that node okay for example i started from node one okay so now you reach node one what you would do uh, in the visited array you would mark node one as one that means it is visited now from node one Pick any node which is directly connected to it and is not visited till now. So node 2 is not visited. So from here, we will move here. And now we are at node 2. As soon as you reach node 2, you will mark node 2 as visited as well. So now what you will do, in the adjacency list of node 2, we have 5 and 1, right? So we go to 1, but 1 is already visited. We check whether 1 is visited or not. We can see 1 is already visited, so we are not going there. Uh, we check for 5. 5 is not visited, so we would move on to 5. So you see, starting from here, we are going D as much as possible, right? For uh, now, we are at node 5, right? So mark it as visited. Now repeat the same process. Go here, node 7, mark it as visited. Now track back because node 7 does not have any nodes which is not visited and is directly connected to node 7, right? So the work of node 7 is completed. So it would go back to the node which has made a DFS call to this node. So we'll go back to 5. 5 checks. Are there any other nodes left? The answer is no. So it would track back again. So here you can see this is actually recursion, right? So you need to have the knowledge of recursion to understand this completely. So from node 5, we would track back to node 2. Node 2 has nothing to do. So we would track back to node 1. Node 1 sees are there any other nodes which are not visited and directly connected to me? Answer is yes. Three is directly connected to node one and is not visited. So we would go back to three. Now we are at three, mark it visited. For three, we would re repeat the same process. Node four, four is marked visited one. So nothing to do for node four, track back to three. Yes, there is to visit something in node three. So we would go to node six, mark it as one and everything's done. So we would track back to node three, nothing to do here, track back here. And from here, we would return to the place where we made DFS call on node one, basically in the main function. So this is how your DFS traversal works. So for DFS, you have to have this array. Uh, to be honest, you don't need, uh, once you are comfortable with DFS, you actually don't even need this array. You can actually keep for each node its parent detail, and then you can go with that without using this array. But at the beginning stage, at the beginner's level, I will highly recommend you to use this uh, visited array. So this is how your DFS work, okay? So let's run this DFS. Let's implement it on this tree itself. Or do we have any question regarding, uh, let's let's first implement this and then we'll take questions, okay? So this is how we are creating the graph, okay? Using adjacency list. So I'm not going to do anything here. And simply what, what I'm going to do is run DFS on node one, okay? And here you see, Let's define DFS. So this is the DFS array which will traverse, oh sorry, which will traverse this whole tree one by one, right? In the manner in which DFS is supposed to 
visit so now we have a visited array of type bool right this is a visited array of type bool again since i'm declaring this globally so all of the values are initialized this zero which means not visited so as soon as you reach certain node what you do you mark it as unvisited right i mean sorry visited right so that is exactly what we are doing here so i'm marking the node one uh, current node that is n o d e as one that means it is now visited after that for each node node v in the adjacency list of current node so what i'm doing i am traversing the adjacency list of current node so basically when i'm Traversing for node one, what is happening? Node one has its own adjacency list, right? We have just learned that. And in that we have two and three, right? So what I'll do, I'll traverse them one by one and see if it is not visited, make a DFS call there. If it is not visited, make a DFS call there and so on. So this is how your DFS call. So now you are traversing uh, the adjacency list of current node one by one and checking whether current node is visited or not. So if current node, which is V is not visited, simply make a dfs call to that node as simple as that and your dfs is complete so how you would know that we are visiting the node in correct order so let's simply print it okay so what we are doing we are running dfs and simply printing the nodes in the order they are visited so let's input this tree and see what is the order in which they get traversed okay so there are like seven nodes one is connected to two one is connected to three, two is connected to five, five is connected to seven, three is connected to four, and three is connected to six. Okay, you see? So this is the order in which they get traversed. So see here, first we started from node one. So of course, node one will be printed. So I start traversing node one's, nodes one's adjacency list, right? And I see, okay, in the adjacency list of node one, I have two. Is it visited? The answer is no. Till now, we have not visited two. So I'll make a DFS call to node two because in the code, if if node two is not visited, currently current node V is not visited, make a DFS call to node V, right? I check whether two is visited. The two is not visited, so make DFS call to two. So basically, I went from one to two and then five and then seven. So this is the order we followed. So we would track back, track back, track back. From here, we would go to three, right? go to three and then we went to four and then track back and then we went to node six. So this is how your B, uh, DFS traversal works. This will go as deep as possible. This can be used to find the height of a rooted tree, right? How that is uh, that uh, I need to cover in different lecture because in, in the given time frame, I'll not be able to cover all of the algorithms in a single lecture. Okay, so this is how DFS works. This is the implementation. Do you have any questions? This is Sai again ask. Uh, no, this is a session on tree, which is subset of graph. So we can assume that this is a session of uh, tree, I mean graph. Do we have any question on uh, D, uh, DFS and its implementation? Anything that you missed? I need to, okay. Uh, just just take two minutes and, uh, and print uh, and post any any question you have okay uh, i need to put this put my laptop on charge because okay sorry for the inconvenience okay okay now all good so Okay, Rohan says to far. <laughs> uh, okay, so Rohan, the thing is, uh, in lectures like these, we are given a time frame and we have to complete uh, these many concepts in, in a single lecture. Like I have to cover like so five, six concepts in a single lecture of time frame of uh, one and a half hour or one hour, 45 minutes. So uh, that's why I need to keep a pace a little bit higher. Uh, uh this all of these lectures are also available on my channel and also there are great teachers like god of say and and uh, eric to and other channels which have covered this in details uh, so you can learn from there as well but, but here i'm trying to give you a high level idea along with as much uh, clarity as possible in the given time frame because if i take too much time i won't be able to cover all of the uh, all of the 
topics that I've given to cover in this session. So I have like four other topics to cover as well. And I'm in fact, I'm going too slow with it. Uh, if I consider that how much time I've left. So, okay. Uh, how to search for an element? Uh, basically, this, this question should be regarding tree, right? So you might uh, your question maybe uh, what I'm uh, able to understand is this for example node 3 you wanted to search whether it is directly connected to node 4 or not right uh, that that is what you meant by your question that how we can search an element uh, or Nippon okay so in that case you have to traverse the whole adjacency list of node 3 there is no other way around so it would take big off e time where e is the adjacency set uh, size of that uh, uh, size of the adjacency list of node three. Okay, you there is no other way around. You have to go through all of all of the nodes one by one. What you can do, you can uh, change. In fact, in, instead of using vector, you can use set, and then you can take log n time and uh, and is the size of the adjacency list of node x in which you are going to search certain element. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, God of says is DGDP also in code and code. Yes, I have covered DGDP as well. Uh, give an example of binary search tree. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Rakesh, that will fat, I mean, make this session lengthy. Or uh, binary search tree itself is, is a vast concept to cover. There, there are a lot of things regarding binary search tree, and uh, not all of that can be covered here. And since you are only asking to give an example, even though I have to explain what is binary search tree and then with an example. So that would take time. So unfortunately for this session, I can't do that. Oh, so just good channel for studying trees and graph. I have my channel and uh, I don't know whether Eric to had covered or not, but maybe Gaurav Sen has covered it. Uh, I don't, I don't actually know many channels. Believe me, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to uh, sell my own channel, but but literally, I, I do not spend much time there. Uh, there are three or four channels I know. Uh, if you want to learn college level uh, data structure or algorithm, there is someone, even I'm forgetting the name. Uh, sorry. So there is Tushar Roy. I think most likely he might have covered it. I have covered most of the algorithms of graph or tree. And also, uh, there is Gaurav Sen, Eric To, and also there's one more channel which is my personal favorite algorithms life that guy goes into too much details and i just love about that uh, that thing about his channel so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but that's what i'm thinking Vina. but but the thing is uh, most of the students might not be able to understand the uh, pseudo code so yeah uh, rohan says that striver sir have already covered so uh, most likely striver uh, if i'm not wrong strivers channel name is take you forward right so my uh, uh, rohan says that he has covered so yeah strivers has has all uh, he also have covered graph algorithm so you can watch from there as well so mm -hmm, okay i i'm not seeing so many questions regarding dfs so we'll move on i'm assuming that most of you guys uh, have a certain idea that what is dfs okay so now let's go for bfs BFS you can use to find the shortest thing. Okay, you can use it to find the shortest path, uh, and shortest path by shortest path. I don't mean to say that in weighted graph. I only mean to say by unweighted graph. What is this? Okay, okay, okay. Let me just delete this. Now let's go for BFS. That is breadth first search. Ah, uh, okay. Let's just use this. I hope this is able to cover all of these things. Okay, okay, okay. Great, 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 great. great, great. Oh, okay. Mm, this color, this, this, this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is. So see, this is. Uh, I need to change the graph a little bit more so you understand what is BFS. So. Five six seven. Node eight. I messed up. Node eight. Nine. This is going to take a lot of space. Okay, so now I need to increase the size of this array. 
we already have seven elements so let's go for eight nine ten okay and now this is bfs not dfs so now we are going to learn about bfs that is bread first search so using bfs you can actually find out the shortest path from certain node shortest path by that i mean when we have graph which uh, doesn't have weighted edges what what is weighted edge so in the tree you can also have each each edge can have its cost for example if these two are cities and this is the road it can describe that uh, the length of the road okay so that is called weighted graph for now i'm not working with weighted graph so what you can do for example if you wanted to know for each node you want uh, you wanted to know at what distance this is from node 1 for example quickly you want to find out at what distance node 3 is from node 1 or node 7 is from node 1 quickly quickly uh, by quickly i mean in constant time how you can do that you can apply bfs so this is our visited array okay again we are going to use this visited array you can 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 10 okay so now how the bfs works so suppose you wanted to find out for each node at what distance they are from node 1 the distance will be measured using number of edges for example node 4 is at distance 2 because you have to go here and then here and uh, one more thing about trees is that there is always a unique path from one node to another node in a tree okay so from node 1 to 4 there will be only a unique path because there are no cycles so how bfs works so bfs works in this manner or uh, since the problem statement is to find out distance of each node from certain node which will be calling root right in this case root is one so for each node i want to find out the distance the minimum distance from node one how you can do that see first of all find out all of the node which are at distance zero from node one so let's create another array which will store the distance of each node okay so this I think I can make a little bigger. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So find out all of the nodes which are at distance zero. Which node is at distance zero from node one? Of course, node one itself, right? So node one is at distance zero. node one is the only node which is at distance zero from our root node right we are evaluating distance of all other node from node one right so node one is at distance zero now process all of the nodes which are at distance two how you can do that see sorry no uh, at distance one because we have found found out all of the node at distance zero now we need to find out all of the nodes at distance one how you can do that see all of the node which are at distance one are actually directly connected to node at distance zero, right? Node at distance zero is this itself. So all of the nodes that are at distance one are actually the uh, these, this, 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 and this. Okay, these four nodes uh, we use different color for them, blue. So all of these nodes which are node two, four three and eight are at distance one right and the they will be directly connected to the node which are at distance zero because from there to reach this node you have to take one edge and that is why all of these are at distance one so node two four three and eight are at distance one uh this is so let me just do this two three four and eight two three four and eight are at distance one okay now uh, see here we have found out these nodes which are at distance one how you'll find out nodes which are at distance two now see here since this node is at distance one from the root all of the nodes which are directly connected to this and are not visited like these must be at distance two right because this is at distance one to reach this you have to go through one edge that means this must be at distance two right making sense and that's why all of the nodes which are directly connected to the nodes at level one and are not visited are actually at distance two because to reach those nodes you have to go through one edge right and that's why again different color yellow maybe yellow will not be visited visible i guess red so 
all of the node at distance two will be the node which are directly connected to one of these nodes. Okay, so node which is directly connected to node two and is not visited. So directly connected to node two and is not visited is clearly five. So node five is at distance two. Clearly, you can see node five is at distance two. See here, right? Ah, sorry. So this. Okay. Now for node four. Nothing is at distance two because from node one directly connected and is not visited. Uh, visited nothing. Oh, I forget to mark them visited. When we found out node one, one is visited. When we found out node two, four, three, and eight, two, four, three, and eight, they are visited. And node five, five, I just found out, so it is visited as well. So we have processed node four as well. Now let's go and process three. Node three, the node which are directly connected to node three and are not visited are these. Six and four. So node six is visited, and nodes. Uh, why is this? There's no four. I, I by mistake did this. Now, of uh, those nodes which are directly connected to node three and are not visited, are four and six. So four and six now we mark, mark visited, and four and six will be at distance two. Right. Same goes for the other. Now we have process three. Let's process eight. Nothing is there to add. That's gone. So we have processed all of the node at distance one. After processing all of the node at distance one, we are able to get all of the distance at uh, all of the nodes at distance two. Now to find the node at distance three, what we have to do? We have to process all of the nodes at distance two. So at distance three, process five. What are the node connected to node five and are not visited? Of course, seven. So seven is at distance three. Seven mark seven. I'm not using different color this time, so forgive me about that. So seven is now visited. Nothing to do with four because in four we have nothing which is unvisited. For node six, there is nothing which is unvisited. So this is what you have found. For node five, it is at distance two. Node four is at distance two. My bad. No, what was okay? Okay, okay. This is actually seven. I. My bad. Uh, so basically, you got the idea, right? First of all, you have to. Uh, uh, I messed up because of my four and seven looks exactly the same. Actually, I'm not even sure. I think I wrote them two times because this is seven. I'm sure. I I by mistake wrote four two times, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, so eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are only nine nodes. So, what is that is missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this this is nine. Either this is nine or that is nine. Sorry about that. So the basic idea is: first of all, find out node at distance zero. That will be your root itself. Okay. This will be at distance zero, and then using this, using the node of distance zero, you can find out distance node of distance one. Then, using the node of distance one, you can find out nodes at distance two. Then, using the nodes of distance two, you can find out node as distance three. What is happening? There are there is one important observation. You are processing nodes in the order of their distance. First, you will process node at distance zero, then at one, at two, right? And this is also the order in which they are found. First of all, we found out node zero uh, nodes at zero zero distance. Then we found out node at one distance, and then we found out nodes at two distance, and so on. Right. So basically, we are processing the nodes in the order they are found, and because of this, instead of creating a list and then processing them again and again, create a list of distance zero element and then process this. Create a list of uh, distance one elements and then process them, and so on. Instead of doing that, what you can do, you can use a uh, queue. You can use Q, and using this ins instead of creating this, you don't have to do that. Using this, you can actually process. You can you can you don't need to create extra list. So how you can do this using Q? Let me show you because uh, if I sh don't show this with an example, this won't be clear. So again, I need
okay one two three four five six seven so what you do you create a queue and queue is if you know it follows FIFO procedure right first in first out the element which are inserted first will be processed first that is exactly our need right so first what you do you already know since you have to find out the distance of every other node from node one right so node one is your root distance of root is already zero and in the queue you would insert node one and you would already always process the node at this uh, at the beginning of the queue what you would do now you would process node one how many nodes are at uh, node one directly connected to node one and are not pro processed at this point uh, to show you let me use this color so this for now uh, because I don't want to go ahead and delete all of this that will require extra time so I'm going to use this to represent visited okay this color to represent visited okay so from node one the node which are not visited are this is nine okay this time I'm not going to fall for that so two four eight and three okay so you would insert two three four and eight and distance of all of these will be one extra distance of this distance of node one is one zero so distance of all of these will be one so node two will have distance one three will have distance one this will have distance one node eight will have distance one pop out from the queue now this represents front of queue now what you will do you will process two and all of these nodes are of course visited And now process two, repeat the process again for node two. And what you would do, you you would see directly connected to nodes that are directly connected to node two and are not visited. Directly connected to node two and are not visited is only one node that is five. So distance of five would be distance of this node plus one. Distance of node two is two. So sorry, distance of two is one, one plus one, two. So node five will have distance two. And also whenever you find new node, insert it into the queue. So see here, we are using queue. We don't have to. Uh, our, our requirement was to process the node as they are discovered in the order they are discovered, and queue does exactly the same. As long um, in as early as you found certain node, simply insert it into queue. So if you found certain node at at, at time one, insert it into queue. Then you will find a node at time at least two or more, right? So basically, they will be inserted into the queue in the order they are found and they will be processed in uh, in the queue in the order they are found because you always already i uh, mean always process from the front of the queue that's why we'll, we use queue okay if i show you the implementation without wasting much time okay we need one more array and let's remove this bfs what we do right we create a queue of int type in, in the queue, we, I guess we use push function, node one. I don't even need to take this. Why I'm inserting one? Because one is the root and I need to find out the distance of every other node from node one. Okay. So after that, what you will do while there is at least one element, while the queue is not empty okay while well, the queue is not empty process what you would do you would always take the element which is at the beginning so in current node is equals to q dot front and after that what you will do you will remove that element from the front okay process this and remove it so current represents the current node that we need to process and what you will do to process current node sorry or uh, to process that what you will do in the adjacency list of current node, in the adjacency list of current node, you'll process each node one by one and check if this node is visited or not. If it is not visited, you need to insert this into the queue. So basically, I was having one, so current represents one, and then in the adjacency list of node one, what I'm doing, I'm taking nodes one by one and seeing whether they are visited or not. So in the adjacency list of one, I checked there was four. One, four is visited. The answer is no. So I'll insert four into the queue. Distance of node and ODE is equal to distance of current node plus one, right? And also mark node 
the node that we just inserted in the queue as true that this is visited and also push this into the queue and also we have not defined the distance array in distance so this is how your bfs works so you create a queue insert the root into it and also distance of root should be one ah uh, zero after that you process queue till it's empty there is nothing to be left uh, left to be processed okay each time carry uh, bring out the first element to be processed first element into the queue and then remove that from the queue after that check in the adjacency list of that node whether there are some node which are not visited and that is exactly what we are checking here after that distance of that node would be distance of current node plus one now this is visited because we are inserting this into the queue and this should work just fine i don't know whether there will be some errors or not after that let's print distance of each node okay let's see if we get any error okay cool till now we are not getting any error so let's run bfs on this same graph okay so how many nodes we have one two three three six nine nine nodes we have one is connected to four one is connected to two one is connected to eight one is connected to three okay two is connected to five five is connected to seven done is connected to oh my god three is connected to nine okay three is connected to nine and three is connected to six distance of node one at least should have been distance of node one should have been at least zero why it is not zero if we v that n and then n minus one edges a b a dot push back b b dot push back a then run bfs there's some mistake in b uh okay 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 damn it sorry 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 uh you also need to mark the root unvisited because if you don't mark it unvisited uh see i push this into the queue and did not mark it as visited so when you reach this node and see if there is certain node which is directly connected to this and not visited it will say yeah it is node one and it would insert node one again and that is what was causing the problem and that's why distance of node one was not coming zero uh, let's just let me just copy this test case or I don't have to type it again so again important thing when you are inserting the root uh, mark it as zero basically uh, mark it visited oh, sorry mark it visited which is one zero means unvisited one means visited sorry I'm taking too much stress okay so here you see node one is at distance zero oh. node one is at distance zero node two three and four are at distance one right uh two three and four are at distance one and also uh node eight is at distance one right what node are at distance two five uh six and nine so five six and nine are at distance two and only node seven is at distance three so node seven is at distance three right so this is how your bfs works uh as far as the theory and implementation is concerned and again i have also covered this on my channel so if you think that this is going too fast again someone someone has mentioned in the comment section strivers striver have also covered this i have also covered this so if you uh want to learn it slow pace you can go to my channel strivers channels or maybe to Roy or maybe other there god of Satan. there are many channels you can go to okay so now i'll take questions after five six okay this is five six so we are ready for any questions if you have any doubt please go ahead and ask oh oh my god my back hurts ah someone says you can work for us. please work for us we are anonymous what is this how to find length of two nodes 
how to find length between two nodes basically you want to find the distance between two nodes right uh if you uh, till i answer that okay it's all clear for nipun at least uh i'll wait for others response as well thank you nipun uh so uh prem sagar ask uh, how to find the length between two nodes good question uh to find the length between two nodes what you can do you can run a bfs that is a worst idea what you can do you can use lca you can use binary lifting one of the techniques using lca is binary lifting uh in fact to find the this uh, the binary lifting is the technique using which you can find the lca between two nodes once you have the lca between two nodes you can find out the distance between them in constant time and using binary lifting you can calculate this, uh, the lca of two nodes in log n time so overall complexity between finding the distance between two nodes is log n so to answer your question uh where is ah prem sagar to answer your question you need to apply you need to learn lca that is lowest common ancestor and then you need to apply that using lca you can find out distance between two nodes in log n time okay uh okay i'll try to come live on my channel as well so i'm assuming we don't have uh since i have asked 3 minutes ago uh i don't think we have much questions in bfs section as well so we have covered traversal techniques graph a tree representation now we are left with two important concept and prem saga uh, i told you to learn lca and we are going to cover lca next what is lca and why to learn this both okay so let's go ahead and learn lca okay remove all of these okay 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 one one question uh one question i'm going to ask you guys is this if we keep this session interactive as much as possible then this will be fun otherwise this is going to be a dull session and uh, i'll be sorry if that happens i'll be really really sorry so 5 note 6 notes oh, again 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 1 2 3 4 5 not 7 so this is not 6 this is not 6 8 9 then okay uh, so you guys uh, the next concept that we are going to learn next uh, i'll cover lca after that so question for you guys if you are given a tree this is the that we are going to learn you are given a tree right and you have to find uh, the diameter of the tree okay diameter diameter or you can print simply the length of the diameter how you find it so the diameter of a tree is the distance be- the maximum distance between any two nodes so in this tree i think this will this will be this 1 2 3 4 5 so diameter of this tree is 6 so the question is you are given a tree how you'll find the length of the longest path basically length of the diameter again or uh, is there any question regarding diameter diameter is uh, uh, at least the definition of diameter is uh, understandable right so the question is how you will find the length of the diameter anyone knows because let's let's keep the session interactive otherwise this is going to be a dull session <sighs> anyone a uh, difference between ith q element what is that difference between ith q element c or uh, to c winner to find the difference you need to have at least two elements right you are only telling difference between ith q element ith means only a single element uh, please uh, clear your question the question is not clear please come again winner uh, so nishan says a uh, height of left plus right diameter okay height on left plus height on right okay comma diameter on left diameter on right okay so what you are telling is actually dynamic programming approach yeah uh, this is one way to find uh, nishan uh, the comment of nishan says maximum of height of left plus height of right comma diameter on left comma diameter on right this is actually recursive algorithm which is uh, dp on tree so there are 
two ways to find out diameter of a tree, la longest length in a tree. And two, one of the ways is using DP and Nishan's method that, the, that he has commented in the section is actually DP algorithm. Yeah, that is correct, Nishan. Uh, root to child DFS and after that, uh, do DFS on child root, correct? This is the other way. I told you there are two ways and one way is what Nishan told me uh, told to us and other ways what Parth is telling, okay? Uh, somewhat by DFS, not sure. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, in fact, both the method uses DFS. Rohan, you are absolutely right. There are two methods, one using DFS and one using DP, but even DP using uh, uses DFS. So yeah, in both the algorithms, we are actually using DFS. So two times DFS, correct, Parthiv? And Nipun, uh, okay. and calculate the long resistance from X mark. Uh, yeah, correct, Nipun, and yeah. So most of the 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 responses that I've got are absolutely correct. There are two methods you can find out uh, diameter of the tree, length of the diameter of the tree, and that is one using DP, and another one. Uh, you, only applying sing, uh, simple DFS. So one using DP on tree, of course, in, uh, it will use DFS internally, okay? Clearly this will use uh, DFS. And other method is without using DP, simply using DFS. So we are going to cover this. On my channel, I have covered both of, the, uh, both of them, but DP one, I won't be able to explain here in short time because uh, I don't know whether most of you guys are uh, very comfortable with recursion or not because dp on tree specifically will use recursion no matter what dp on tree 99 percent of time will use dfs which is recursion okay normal dp algorithm can be solved using df uh, using recursion or iteration there are both both of the approaches but when you are working with tree most likely 99 percent of the time you have to apply dp using dfs only so without using without having the knowledge of recursion, you won't be able to apply DP on tree in, in most of the cases. I, I haven't seen any a single problem where I, I can apply iterative DP on tree. So I don't know about that. So basically we are going to apply DFS, how this works. Okay, the proof is interesting. I won't be providing the proof that is more interesting. I have provided the proof on my channel, but that would again, increase the length of this whole lecture. I cannot unfortunately do that. So. Uh, if you can, please, please, please go ahead and learn the proof of this. Okay, that is interesting. So pick any node, any node, doesn't matter. Pick any node, for example, this, uh, use different color. Pick any node, let's say we have picked node or uh, step one. Let me write down the steps. One, pick any node. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not able. First of all, my my writing is very very bad, and and also, uh, when you are working with pen tab, it, it becomes worse. So pick a node. Any arbitrary node doesn't need to be anything. In this case, we have chose node eight. From node eight, find out the node which is at most distance from node eight, the farthest node from node eight. For example, this this or this. Okay, one of these, right? So this is a distance. One, two, three, four. So this is at distance four. One, two, three, four. This and this both are at distance four, right? So you can choose any node. Suppose you picked this, uh, this. So choose a node, find out a node which is the farthest from this node. And we, we came to a conclusion and we chose this. It doesn't matter which node you choose if there are multiple, right? For example, in this case, we have three nodes, which are farthest from node eight, it doesn't matter. So pick any one, we have picked node five. And, and find farthest node. So we have picked node five. From node five, now when you find out the length, uh, basically the longest length from node five, and, and for your information, if you don't know, using DFS, you can actually find the longest length starting from certain node. You can do this by DFS also or BFS also. Okay. So pick, take a step two. Take that node and find 
लेंथ ऑफ फारजेस्ट नोड फ्रॉम दिस नोड फ्रॉम दिस नोड आई नो दिस इज नॉट रीडेबल बट ओके सो स्टेफ वन इज चूज एनी नोड इन आर केस वी चूज नोट एट फाइन द फारदेस्ट नोट इन द फारदेस्ट नोट वी पिक टू वॉज नोट फाइव नाउ द सेकेंड स्टेप इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम नोट फाइन नोट फाइव फाइंड आउट द फारदेस्ट नोट द लेंथ ऑफ द फारदेस्ट नोट फ्रॉम नोट फाइव द लेंथ ऑफ द फारदेस्ट नोट इज एक्चुअली दिस राइट एंड आई मीन द फारदेस्ट इज दिस एंड द लेंथ इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड सिक्स so the length of the diameter is 6 this is how you find out diameter using 2 dfs first dfs to find out the farthest node from any arbitrary node second dfs must be from that node okay the node that you find out in the first step from this node run a dfs and find out the length of the farthest node from this node which is this the length of uh, node 9 from 5 which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this is your length of the diameter so this is how you find out length of the diameter okay uh i don't think we should have any any what we say we should not have any uh any confusion in this algorithm right do we have uh, if we have any problem please post it down in the comment section i just want to say i want me i want to wait for like 2 3 minutes if 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 there is please if there is not you can say okay uh, all is clear oh my god no back i'm waiting for 2 minutes okay are you guys there <laughs> looks like i'm teaching to no one for now but that's okay i don't mind maybe you guys went for code forces contest that is today i also want to participate in there okay for next like 2 minutes i'll also wait uh, if we i don't get any response that means uh, we are all clear okay we are clear we are clear we are clear thank you akriti vinay and nipun thank you ah uh, for responding nipun and vinay and akriti akriti so okay so i uh, since of course i've got response like we are clear so we know how to find out the diameter okay using dfs there is there is one more approach like dfs uh, sorry using dp and that is also interesting so i'll hi first of all i highly invite uh, advise you guys to go ahead and learn the proof of this why this this solution is actually correct why find the first node and then find the farthest node actually works okay proof of correctness go ahead and learn that you can prove this using uh, proof by contradiction uh, so uh, you you will be able to understand that because i uh, i always assume that proof by contradiction is the easiest way okay so the last topic to cover today is <laughs> the most important topic actually lca that is lowest common ancestor what is lca so we have a rooted tree it have to be rooted otherwise lca uh, won't be uniquely defined 3 4 5 6 7 okay so uh, i'll wait for 2 minutes because of azan over here so clearly i'll wait for just 2 minutes and keep it on mute and after that i'll continue okay after uh, azan
hello uh now let's go back to lc thank you for waiting so what is lc lc stand for lowest common ancestor for example what are ancestor for each node first of all the tree must be rooted rooted means there must be a root defined okay so this is the root and all of these are actually child of this node okay this will be called the be called the parent of the nodes of its subtree so what is happening here for example this is parent of this node as well as all of the nodes inside it okay so for this node this and this all of these nodes are actually ancestor node 2 and 1 are ancestor of node 3 okay for node 7 3 2 and 1 all of them are ancestors of node 7 so if you want to find first of all lca is common ancestor right so you are given two nodes for example 7 and 5 and you are required to find the lowest ancestor which is common to both so if you see no for node 7 3 is ancestor 2 is ancestor 1 is ancestor node 5 this this and this is ancestor what is the lowest of all uh, common ancestor if you see one two and three all of them are common ancestor of node seven and five which one is the lowest out of all of these of course node three okay which is nearer to these nodes so lca of seven and five will, will be node three uh what will be lc of four and seven of course it would be node two because common is actually two and one right and node 2 is the lowest one. So LC of node 4 and 7 is actually 2, right? Using the LCA, you can actually find out the distance is constant time, right? This was the question asked. So see here, you know, this is the root. So this is a distance 0. This is a distance 1. This is a 2. This is a 2. This is a 3, 3, and 1. You, If you want to find out the distance between node 4 and node 7, what is this? This is 3, right? So what you can do, you can take the distance of node A which is 2 plus node B, which is 3 minus 2 times a distance of their LCA. 2 times 1, right? So it would be 5 minus 2, 3. So here you can see 1, 2, and 3. This way you are able to find out distance between two nodes in log n time because uh, to find the LCA, it takes log n time. How? I'll tell you in a moment. So I'm just telling you, once you know the LCA, you can actually calculate the distance between A and B using this simple formula. Distance of A, plus distance of B plus, sorry, minus two times distance of their LCA. And all of these distances from their root, okay? All of these distances are defined from their root. So using this simple formula, oh, sorry, using this simple formula, you are actually able to find out the distance between two nodes in constant time. But to find out this, it takes log n time. So the overall formula uh, runs in log n time, okay? So this is one of the major use cases of LCA. There are many. This is one of the. OK, so the question is how I mess things up. So let's clear this, this up. So OK, so this is the tree. The question is how you will find the LCA. OK, so the most efficient way is to find out using binary lifting. Okay, binary lifting. Uh, okay, 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 okay. The spelling correct, correct. I usually worry about the spelling because, of course, my vocabulary, my spellings usually are not correct. So, using this technique, you can find out LCA between two nodes in log n time. How? See, uh, see what you will do. You need to create a sparse array, and that is what I'm worrying about. So, what you do? For each node, you will keep track of its ancestor, okay, at power of two distances. Interesting, right? For node 7, it will be for node 7, its ancestor at two rest. Uh, let's just, for node 7, what we are going to do, again, for each node, we need to store the ancestor of it at power of two distance. What does that mean? I'm explaining with an example. So. Or two to the power zero at two to the power zero distance at two to the power one distance at two to the power two distance and so on, right? For node seven, the node which is at distance two to the power zero, right, is this three, okay? So that is three. For node seven, the node which is at distance the sorry the ancestor which it uh, which is at distance two to the power one, which is at distance two, at distance two, 
we have this right so two now at distance two s power two that is at distance four that does not exist so minus one okay so this is what we have to store for each single element and for that we need to create a sparse table oh, you can call that lca table or whatever and using this you should be able to find out uh, lca between two nodes how uh, let I need to explain this with an example and this is going to take time now unfortunately I cannot avoid this because of course this I have to explain so suppose this is uh, they are parting ways from here 6 7 8 okay so I need to find out LCA of 7 and 8 uh, this will come out here so not not here let's connect it here okay eight and nine so you need to find lca of node seven and nine first of all how you'll find that so see uh we'll we'll use binary lifting for that what we will do we'll make them jump one by one i mean upward at the point where they actually meet if you see the you need to calculate the level of each node for example this is at this zero level this is at one this is at two this is at three four five six and then this sorry this is not at distance seven this is at distance three okay from the root because the root will be unique so what you will do first of all what we will do we will bring both of them at the same level okay and after that we will move them uh together till the point where the uh, the the node pointed by both of them basically of the parent is actually same see what i'll do i need to find lc of 7 and 9 right but 7 is at distance 6 while 9 is at distance 3 right 9 okay so of course this is much deeper first of all what you have to do you have to bring this at the same level as the other node right so make it jump so what you can do you can make it jump one by one so uh, this node becomes, let's say this is A and this is this is A and this is B. Okay. So now A becomes six. Now make it jump again. A becomes five. Now make it jump again. A becomes what? Four, right? A becomes four. And now both of them are at same level. So first thing is, uh, if they are already on the same level, do nothing. If they are not on the same level. Uh, pick the one which is deeper and make it jump upwards till they both are at the same level. But the question is, if you make it jump one by one, it would result in TLE because uh, suppose there are ten, uh, 1 million nodes and uh, the tree is something like bamboo tree. Okay, bamboo tree are like this. Okay, and uh, there are a million nodes. I won't be able to, of course, represent all of them. And you have to find the uh, LCA of node one and uh, the node which is last in the one million node, right? So what you will do, you will need to uh, make it jump to reach it the same level as node one, right? But to do that, what you have to do, you will make it jump one by one and that would require big O of n time, right? Because you have to go through all of those elements and this will this will result in TLE. So, uh, what binary lifting does it, it says okay instead of making a jump of length one okay one by one let's make jump in power of two and that is exactly the reason why we are storing uh their their ancestor information in power of two right so what you, it, it would do or uh, see the difference between their their uh their level is actually three right because this is at distance six this is at distance three so six minus three is three so the difference is of length three so what you would do three you can represent as one one so first you would make a jump of length zero two raised power zero basically so make a jump of length two raised power zero who is two raised power zeroth parent of node seven we already have an array because we already have stored that right just before that i explained right so what I'll do, I'll go to 2 s power 0th parent. 2 s power 0th parent is this. Now my A becomes this. From here, now this bit you have already covered. Now you need to take care of this bit, 
right? Because three, you can represent one, one, right? In binary representation, this is two to the power zero at bit. This is two to the power one at bit, right? Now it says make a jump of length to the power one. From here, to the power one, a uh, one at parent who is it is this. So instead of making a jump of length one, I'm directly making a jump of length two. Now you see in two operation, I am on the same level of node nine. To understand this better, suppose the difference between their nodes was like uh, uh, 12. Okay, one was at distance 15, one was at distance three. So distance that one node need to cover was 12. How you'd cover that? See, binary representation of this should be eight. This, ah, uh, my bad. Okay. Okay. This. This is 12, right? In binary representation. This is 2 s per 0, 2 s per 1, 2 s per 2, 2 s per 3. Okay. So this is how 12 will be representation. To make a jump of 12, instead of going one by one, what it will do, it will check the zeroth bit. Zeroth bit is not set. So you won't make a jump of length 2 s per 0. Okay. So you won't go and see who is my 2 s per zeroth parent. That is direct parent. Okay. So uh, one at bit is also not set. So no jump of length 2 s per 0. Second bit is actually set for this node. Who is the node at distance to raise power two, which is four, right? So you directly make a jump of length four. So now you have already covered length four, or length four in a single jump. So see what is happening here. And after that, the next bit is three. So from that node, you need to make a jump of length to raise power three, which is eight. That node already stores the information of to raise power third parent, right? So you directly make a jump on that node. So using using binary lifting, this is called binary lifting because you are making jump in binary uh, binary steps, to as per zero step, to as per one step, to as per three step, right? And that is how you'll be covering this. So at max, how many jumps you can take? Log n jump, right? Because each number can be, uh, each number, if you want to represent it in binary bits, takes log n space. All you have to do is log n jumps. And that's why in log n jump, these two will be on the same level. Once A is here, B is here, basically both of them are on the same level. You need to check whether both are both are same or not. For example, if this was the tree and I wanted to find the LCAF one and three, what I'll do, I'll make three jump, right? So three would go from here to here and then from here to here. Now after reaching B is here, A is also here. Now, since A and B are same, this itself is the LCA. So if after making all of the jump, basically, if after they both come to the same level, if A and B are same, that means A, uh, basically, those two itself are the LCA. So you can directly return either A or B. That itself is the LCA. Otherwise, what you can do, now you have to, for example, this was the case when you have to stop directly because after making the jumps to make them on the same level both are both of them are pointing to the same node that means this itself is the lca if that not happens that is this case if they both are still pointing to the different node again we'll start making jumps of maximum length right so what i'll do i'll try to make a length uh, uh, if when you are processing you define maximum uh, maximum power to which you can make jump. See, I told you, you don't have to make, uh, what is the maximum length of a tree? If there are n nodes, tree can be of n minus one length, right? The distance, maximum distance can be two response, uh, sorry, n minus one, right? So I'm assuming n. So if the maximum length can be n, then you can have at max log n number of jumps. Why? Because at max, uh, the the first jump is of length 2 to the power 0, right? The next is 2 to the power 1. If you take like a 10th jump, it would be 2 to the power 10, right? So this x, 2 to the power x must be less than, less than equals to n. So x must be less than equals to log base 2 n, right? And that is why number of uh, information the number of parents that we'll be storing are not more than log n for each node. So what I'll do, I, uh, I'll define first of all log n, which will be roughly 20 if n is 1 million. If there are 1 million nodes, 
at max you have to store the parent at two raised power twentieth distance. Okay, not more than that. So I'll start with two raised power twenty. Does two raised power twenty parent exist for four and three? The answer is no. Two raised power twenty is roughly one million. One million parent does not exist. Go for two raised power twenty. Uh, two raised power nineteen doesn't exist. Two raised power eighteen doesn't exist. Dash 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 till two raised power two. Two raised power two parent exists. One two three. No. Uh, because this is at distance zero, this is at distance one, this is at distance two. So at max two s power one s parent exists, right? So two s power zero parent parent exists for this node and the, for this node, and two s power one s parent exists. This is two s power zero, and this is two s power one s parent. Even two s power second parent does not exist, which will be parent at distance four, right? So two s power one s parent exists. So I'll try to make a jump of length two s power one, right? Node at two s power one is this. Should I make or not? So we need to make them jump till the point where their parent are actually same, right? So if, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, till the point where they they should not point to the same element. If I make a jump of two s power one, this node will point to this, and this node will point to this. I know this is getting messy, but. Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, I had to finish by seven uh, thirty, but it is already seven forty. So I I cannot take a lot of time because I know uh, you might be thinking that this is a lot to take in, and that is absolutely true. On my channel, I took like uh, two hours, uh, one one and a half hour only to explain this this technique. Two different, two or three different lectures. Okay, so of course, in in short time, I won't be able to explain, and you won't be able to understand it fully. But try to understand as much as possible. So after reaching the same level, uh, I want to make a length of two s power, uh, make a jump of length two s power one, two s power one. You this and this both will reach here. But now we should avoid a jump where both of them will point to the same node. If I make a length two uh, s power one length jump. Both of them will point to the same node, so I should not make a jump of this. Okay, so I should not make. So now make a jump of two s power zero. So from here I would reach here. After you are done with this, after you have made a uh, a length two s power zero jump, you are done. Okay, so now both of them are pointing to this. After that, what will happen? Their immediate parent will actually be the LCA. So if I explain with a better example, with less violence on the screen, here, a better example for you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So both of them. This is A. This is B. Both of them are on same level, right? So what you would do, you would say, okay, start from the maximum one, two s power twenty doesn't exist, two s power nineteen, two s power dash 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 dash, two s power three, two s power three means uh, parent at distance eight, parent at at distance eight doesn't exist, go for two s power two, parent at distance four, so at distance one, two, three, four, yeah, parent at distance four exists. So should I make a jump of two s power two? The answer is no. Because if you make a jump of two s power two, both of them will be pointing to the same node, and this we should avoid. Because of course their LC is this, and if we make a jump of length two s power two, or if there exists another node above them, they will actually miss out the original LC. That's why we we never make a jump after which both of them point to the same elements. So since their two s power second parent is actually same, we won't make this jump as well. So we will go for two s power one. Two s power one as parent exists. Yes, two s power one as parent exists for both. So make a jump of that. And uh, after the jump, will they be pointing to the same node? The answer is no. So of course, make a jump of length two s power one. And now they are pointing to this node and this node, right? After that, we have taken care of two s power one. We'll go for two s power zero. Should we make a jump of two s power zero? If I make a jump of two s power zero, they both will be pointing to node two. Which is same. So of course we would not make a jump of two s plus zero. As soon as you reach zero, your for loop stops. So start your loop from twenty because there are uh, there can be a million node depending upon that. Uh, because if there are a million nodes, roughly two s plus twenty is a million. That's why I take twenty. Okay. So now starting from twenty, we go till zero. And as soon as you complete two s plus zero, their immediate 
parent will actually be LCA. So this is how you apply binary lifting. Again, I'm sure this will have a lot of doubts. I'll take questions, but uh, I'll answer only those which I can uh, answer in the given time constraint. Otherwise, you can go to my channel. I've already covered that. Uh, that was, I took like two, three lectures of like 35, 40 or 40 minutes uh, to cover this two, three lectures. So uh, I think implementation was in a separate lecture. So yeah, this is a lot to take in and understanding this is very, very important because you will be using this. Let me tell you where this will be used. So that will be an important information for you guys. Well, this LCA will be used. So see how, where this LCA is used. First of all, find distance between two nodes okay this is between two nodes it is actually an easy algorithm okay this will come under easy second how you can utilize lc well there are worst algorithms uh, like uh, you can you, you can fi uh, apply in i guess in most of the centroid algorithm centroid decomposition In most of the centroid decomposition uh, algorithms, you will be actually using LCA. That is medium hard. Three, uh, with centroid decomposition, there is also a uh, heavy light decomposition, HLD. This is actually hard algorithm. Okay, there also you will be applying binary lifting. So binary lifting is not something that only is used to find out the distance between two nodes. It, it, this, uh, I think there are more use cases of uh, HLD or what I'm saying, binary lifting, but these two are very important. Heavy light decomposition, it is actually a hard algorithm or data structure, whatever you want to call. Uh, and it uses internally segmentary and this and that and a, a lot of things. And the same goes for centroid decomposition. And both of them actually uses uh, uh, actually use binary lifting to answer queries. And also, yeah, I forget to mention that there are queries on tree. When you are working with queries on tree, uh, like a square root decomposition, most algorithm, you, you, you most likely be working with LCA. So it is very, very important and highly recommended that you learn LCA. LCA. Learning LCA is not that difficult, but their implementation, their use case in their use case in, in some of the algorithms like central decomposition, Mohs algorithm, query on tree, it is it is just very beautiful. I mean, it's implementation and, and, and use cases are so diverse. So I'll highly recommend you to go through this. Okay. And of course, this should have uh, for most of you guys, you won't be able to, you would have not be able to understand it completely. And that is absolutely correct. Uh, I mean, that is absolutely fine because in, in short time, you won't be able to understand this completely. So uh, I already have lecture on this, covered this, and also I, I have practice problems as well, which cover this. So you can go through all of them. So to understand this better, I have this lecture to implement how this works, how the implementation work after that i've covered the uh, problems as well practice problems so you can go through that practice problem implement it yourself so you understand okay you are able to understand it correctly so yeah uh, this was all for this session uh if uh, i don't know should i even ask if is there any suggestion for if yeah i also have a session next time so is there any suggestion for next session or anything you would like to pass comment on. Uh, Nipun, you are absolutely right. That's what I just said. Uh, understanding this in, in, in short time is very, very difficult. So that, that's completely fine. If Even if I had this much knowledge that I currently have and I had to learn certain new things, uh, I will have the same, same response as you had. So you guys, any, any suggestion for the next session? Because this is where we stop. We have covered all of the topics that we had to cover in today's session. And if you if you feel that yeah, there are there might have been some some algorithm that should have taken extra time, so you can go through. Of course, the, you can go to any channel. Like, uh, I guess the channel name was Take You Forward or my channel. There are many. You can go through them and learn in detail. Okay.
So no suggestion for the next session, guys. I'll wait for two minutes. Uh, Seven forty-nine. Okay. So if you have suggestion, okay. Thank you, Nipun. So okay, uh, if there are no suggestion, of course I'll see you guys in in the next session when I think I have the next session on seventeen. So see you guys there. Thank you, Nipun, and thank you all of you guys. Thank you, Shah. I appreciate that. Anurag, we should we can finish that. I mean, we can finish this session now. And thank you guys for having me. Uh, it was really a great session. And thank you all, all of you guys for joining in and uh, being as much in, interactive as possible. So yeah, thank you to uh, thanks to all of the audience as well. And thank you, Anurag, and the uh, DSA Carnival organization uh, organizers to have me. Thank you, guys. Okay, so thank you so much, Vakar, sir, for this uh, knowledgeable and interactive session. And uh, I hope all the students were enjoying a lot. And uh, uh, yeah, and took a deep dive into the trees topic. Also, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining the session and uh, making it interactive and successful. Okay, so yeah, our quiz winner for yesterday is Ujjwal Singh from Delhi Technical University. Okay, and he'll be provided a t shirt from Prep Bites. Uh, so you can also get a t shirt. Uh, so don't forget to attend uh, today's quiz. The quiz link is given in the des description box, also in the chat box. Also, okay, so thank you all for joining the session. See you tomorrow with another topic and another expert. Till then, say, stay safe and keep learning. Yes. Once again, thank you, Vakas. <laughs> thank you, Anurag. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.